In the last two videos, we estimated the area under a parabola um, using what's called left-hand Riemann sum. So we considered a bunch of rectangles that are squeezed into the figure in such a way that the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle completely meets the curve that we're trying to measure the area under. In this video, we're going to talk about a slightly different technique, which is called a right-hand Riemann sum. And you might not be surprised at how this works out. So once again, we're back to our familiar shape. And I'm going to use three rectangles again. And so they're going to have a width of two. And so I'm going to start this off the same way we started off the left-hand Riemann sums. Except this time, this is called a right Riemann sum. So in this case, I want the upper right-hand corner to determine the height of the rectangle. Okay. And once again, when I make this area, I'm going to ask you the same questions that I've been asking up to this point. So pause this video, take a look at, at this estimate, think about how good the estimate is, and then think about whether it's an overestimate or an underestimate of the total area. Well, this time, this is probably just about as <clears throat> moderately weak as the, uh, as the left-hand limit with three rectangles was. And this one, we've got these two shapes that we should be counting but aren't, and this much smaller shape that we shouldn't be counting but are. So this looks like it's going to be an underestimate of the actual area. Um, but that's kind of cool, because if we know an overestimate of this whole area and an underestimate of this area, then we can figure that the true area is somewhere in the middle of that. And mathematically, that is a very strong um, piece of information to have. What we call that in math is we talk about upper bounds and lower bounds. And as those bounds get tighter and tighter, not only do we have a better sense of what the actual answer is, but we have more confidence about where that error is. Okay, so also I want you to think about the same way we thought about the width and height of the three rectangles. How do you think that's going to change now that we're doing a right-hand Riemann sum. Once again, pause the video and think that out. And it's going to be very much the same. So each one of these rectangles has a width of two. But what's different is going to be our strategy for calculating the height of it. So this one, the height of the rectangle is over here on the right-hand side. So the height of this rectangle is f of 3. The height of this rectangle is f of 5. And the height of this rectangle is f of 7. So the way you might think about a right-hand Riemann sum is with the left-hand Riemann sum, we kind of remember that I kind of had this idea that I was going to start from 1 and end, of by, end at 7. I was going to count by 2, so that gave me f of 1, f of 3, f of 5, f of 7. With a left-hand Riemann sum, I knew to not count the last term in that sequence. A right Riemann sum is much the same, except I'm not going to count the first term in the sequence. So a right-hand Riemann sum is going to be the estimated area is going to be 2 times f of 3 plus 2 times f of 5 plus 2 times f of 7. Once again, pulling out that common width, we have f of 3 plus f of 5 plus f of 7. And if we grab our table and our calculator, we can come up with a numeric estimate for that. So f of 3 is 8, f of 5 is 6.67, and f of 7 is 2.67. And we want to multiply that all by 2, 
And so our estimate for the area is 34.68. And like I said, we think that that's going to be a lower bound. We think that the actual area is going to be higher than that. So let's compare all the areas we have up to this point. So we have this 41.68 and the 42.68 which we thought were going to be on the high side, we think this one's going to be on the low side. So we know that the actual area under the curve is going to be somewhere in the middle. Okay, so that's the idea of the right-hand Riemann sum. And I think this is enough of a piece of clue that you can do the same thing for the next two diagrams in your workbook, where you're finding that same area using six rectangles, and then again when you're using 12 rectangles. Okay, so you're just going to use the information in the table and your calculator and a sense of how you put them together. But once again, also draw out the rectangles and get a sense for how the estimate is getting closer and closer and also evaluate the answers that you are coming up with because they should be better estimates, that is to say higher than the 34.68 that we came up with, but not so high as the upper bounds that we came up with. All right. In the next video, I'm going to talk about a third technique in addition to the left and right hand Riemann sums.